So yeah, today we're going to discuss the sun. And as the title of the video suggests, we're going to discuss something really strange and somewhat crazy that seems to have happened on the sun approximately 14 and a half thousand years ago. So essentially right before the end of the last glaciation period. And in this case, we're actually going to be discussing one of the new discoveries in regards to a strange phenomenon referred to as the Miyake event. A type of a massive solar storm that we've never actually experienced during the modern era, but we have experienced some smaller ones and they were pretty dangerous. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. Talk about this new study by Ksenia Golubenko and the team you see right here in regards to this particular event. And of course discuss if this is something to worry about or if this is just a scientific curiosity. But to start, let's briefly discuss what we know about these Miyake events, how they were discovered and why they're sort of unusual. And well, technically this is a somewhat recent discovery. There are some previous videos in the description that discuss some of the more unusual events. But in essence, a few years back, a Japanese researcher, Fusa Miyake, discovered a very strange line or a very strange ring inside some of the older trees in Japan. And here this ring represented some kind of an extreme event or some kind of an extreme solar activity that seems to have impacted Earth, leaving behind a major mark visible as a sudden increase in carbon-14 that would be extremely difficult to explain unless something extreme happened beyond planet Earth. And somewhat similar discoveries were then made by looking at the ice cores and by looking at beryllium and chlorine. Which essentially implied that in the year 774 AD, there seemed to be a massive unexplained spike of activity resulting from some kind of a highly radioactive stuff entering the upper atmosphere. And as you can see from this graph, it potentially lasted for a few years. Or at least left a major mark on the upper atmosphere, which took years to resolve. And we know that carbon-14 and a lot of other isotopes like beryllium-10 are usually produced when there is a major increase in cosmic rays or some other highly charged particles entering the upper atmosphere. For example, this is something we would expect during some kind of a supernova event. But a supernova would also leave some other marks. And also during that time, there were people observing the night skies and nothing was actually seen. And so the only potential explanation that sort of made sense was that Maybe the magnetic field of the planet suddenly decreased, or maybe the solar activity suddenly increased so much that it bombarded the planet with a lot of stuff representing highly charged radioactive particles. And though the exact cause is still being investigated today, the overall conclusion from many studies was that it does seem to be some kind of a major solar event, especially because we've seen much smaller ones in some of the recent times. But here this would not be some kind of a solar flare or even some kind of a coronal mass ejection, which is what we experienced back in 2024, with the most famous one of course being the Carrington event. Instead this would be an extremely rare solar event referred to as a solar particle storm. Literally a storm of particles coming from the sun, moving at extremely high velocities, possessing a lot of energy and actually being accelerated by solar activity and solar magnetic lines to move at ridiculously high speeds. And though we actually do see quite a lot of solar flares all the time and coronal mass ejections happen pretty frequently too, these solar storms are super rare. As a matter of fact, one of the last ones that was kind of large in human terms was back in 2005. You can read about this event in the study right here, but this was referred to as the relativistic solar particle event of 2005. And that's because the particles were indeed moving at relativistic speeds close to the speed of light which meant that they actually arrived to planet Earth in just minutes compared to days or hours that we expect from a coronal mass ejection. And while in terms of hazards or dangers, your typical coronal mass ejection, which is of course what produces powerful aurora, in theory can cause a lot of power outages and cause satellite damage, but would otherwise not really affect life on the planet, especially if that life is not sensitive to the Earth's magnetic lines. And so the only reason we even know about the Carrington event or some of the more recent geomagnetic storms is because today we do depend on electricity. But in contrast, a typical solar particle storm can actually be a little bit more extreme. Here it produces very high energy particles, usually protons and electrons, and it does produce a lot of radiation. Now luckily for us, the Earth's atmosphere protects us from most of it, but for anyone living in the higher altitudes, or especially for airplanes and of course satellites, this can be a huge hazard. And so even though solar particle storms, coronal mass ejections and even solar flares are all kind of related and sometimes all three can appear all at once, they are technically three distinct phenomena. 
And during these solar particle storms, particles can actually penetrate the Earth's atmosphere and produce higher ionization on the surface. With this 2005 particle storm actually even producing strong geomagnetic storm that was visible for several days. But that event was approximately 500 times weaker than the events we're discussing today. In other words, a typical Miyake event is at least 500 times stronger than any solar particle storm we've seen in the last few hundred years. And so these Miyake events represent gigantic solar storms that we've only seen in historical records and not in modern history. As a matter of fact, the most recent one that's been discovered in some of the data seems to have happened in 1279. And so far in total, only 9 such events have been discovered based on the analysis of various tree rings and ice cores. And more based on the dates, they seem to happen every 400 to maybe 2400 years. Or actually for some reason, there seems to be a relatively large pause between them, with some of them happening with just a few hundred years between them. For example, we actually have one in 774, then another one in 993, a third one in 1052, and a fourth one in 1279 AD. As a matter of fact, because of these four storms, it actually helped a lot of historians to figure out when certain things happened in the past. You can actually learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but there was a study that used some of the trees from the ancient Viking settlements to find the exact date when Vikings seemed to have settled in Canada on their first journey out of Greenland. And that's because there were certain wooden constructions that contained these exactly same rings, we're talking about tree rings, which were directly connected to one of these Miyake events. And something very similar was used to date settlements in ancient Greece. And so this unusual scientific discovery has actually helped archaeology quite a lot. But because of this bizarre discovery, there's always been this question of hazard. How dangerous is this? And can it actually happen in the next few decades, for example? Or is this more likely to happen like hundreds of years in the future? Well, based on some of the previous analysis, we know that the most recent event was in 1279. That's just under 800 years ago. And since they seem to happen every 400 to 2400 years, at this point, we actually have no idea when the next one is going to occur. But this is definitely something that needs to be studied because of this recent research. Here scientists analyzed the oldest such event and it does seem to be kind of unnerving. As in, it seems to be the most powerful such event ever seen, representing the strongest solar particle storm in the last 15,000 years. And here this was discovered by measuring some of the radiocarbon levels in ancient trees from the French Alps. But what made this discovery kind of strange is the amount of carbon-14 in the tree rings. Here the spike was at least twice in size, suggesting nearly double the amount of carbon-14. Or suggesting that whatever this was, it was potentially the strongest such event ever seen, producing the highest amount of cosmic radiation in the last 15,000 years. This was actually right at the end of the last glaciation period, with the Earth mostly still covered by ice, but this event was still strong enough to leave powerful marks inside of these tree rings. With a spike once again lasting for at least several years, but representing the highest spike we've ever seen in any samples of ice cores or any tree rings. But because this was such an unusual discovery, it actually took at least a couple of years to finally confirm all of this. And so in this study, by using a model known as SOCOL 14CEX, and specifically a chemistry climate model, designed to reconstruct solar particle storms under ancient glacial climatic conditions, scientists officially confirmed that this was indeed super strong, and at least 18% stronger than the previous record holder in 774. And more importantly, at least 500 times stronger than the 2005 event, making this the most powerful radioactive storm in the last 15,000 years. Now here it's assumed that this was the result of the solar activity, but that's of course, as I mentioned before, is still debatable. Which of course suggests that something super bizarre happened to the sun around this time. And though there is still a potential explanation that maybe this was something from beyond the solar system, such as some kind of a gamma ray burst, at the moment solar activity is still the best explanation. But despite all of this, there are still some unanswered questions. With the biggest one of course being the fact that we have no idea what effect any of this would have on modern technology. So for example, if a Miyake event happened today, it's assumed that this intense radiation could potentially disrupt and damage satellites, 
and possibly cause a major damage to electrical grids and communication systems. But that's just an assumption based on some of the previous predictions and some of the much weaker events, such as the one in 1956. You can actually see in this graph it's sort of compared to some of the more powerful Miyake events, and it definitely doesn't compare. It's dramatically weaker. And so, for all we know, maybe this only affects stuff in space and not really life on Earth. As a matter of fact, we know that none of the ancient astronomers or ancient astrologists from, for example, China seem to have witnessed anything during any of these dates. Which means that we have no idea how dangerous this would be. But at the same time, it's this uncertainty that of course implies we have to study this even more in order to try to understand if this is something we need to be aware of. Because chances are, based on some of the previous detections, one of these events could indeed happen in the next few decades. And luckily for us, quite a few studies have been coming out in the last few months, some of which you can discover in the description. And so, in a nutshell, while well, the sun is definitely quite unpredictable and still hides quite a few mysteries, but in just the last few years, we seem to have learned so much already. And we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or we'll learn something else. And so until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and you can DM me directly or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and where you can find some additional videos. Or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.